Even in the real world, clothes confer a stat boost. For example, this t-shirt I'm wearing now offers plus one to comfort and plus five to charisma. Get yours at store.outsidexbox.com. Those stats are even more important in video games, where the stats of your gear could mean the difference between winning and losing. That's how you end up in a situation where you abandon all taste and, sometimes decency, to wear some of the most embarrassing outfits in the game just for a slightly stronger build or a competitive edge. Just ponder these seven embarrassing pieces of gear we had to equip just for those sweet, sweet stats. Enjoy and beware spoilers for the following games. Oh wow, plus two to movement as well. Is there anything this t-shirt can't do? This party is fit for adventure. Our strengths complement each other well. No challenge is beyond our combined might. True enough. They say dress for the job you want, not the job you have. But what if you're an archer in Dragon's Dogma 2 trying to break into the world of burlesque? Dragon's Dogma 2 is a game in which you, the heroic Arisen, set out to meet your destiny, accompanied by an entourage of hand-picked companions known as pawns, who fight by your side, heal you in battle, and boost you when you're out of breath from jogging 100 yards. Hang in there, master. I am coming to assist. Am I carrying too much stuff? Yes. Will I get rid of any of it? No, I will not. These pawns are faithful allies who deserve your respect and gratitude, which is why you'll be preparing sumptuous campfire dinners for them in live-action meat-cooking cutscenes. Weird. And on the battlefield, trading hand slaps with them after a glorious victory. Can't leave my lion guy hanging. Did my best to match your skill. And so, with all this said, we can only hope and pray your pawns don't think any less of you when you discover a chest containing an item called the Ranger's Tights. The Ranger's Tights are a piece of leg armour with good stats for the early game, purportedly made of, quote, supple fabric that stretches to accommodate the wearer, and also very much a pair of knickers. Ah, now here's a surprise. A splendid discovery. As briefs go, they are the briefest. You called? Forgive me, but you do not appear to be in need of aid. These battle panties come with lace-up thigh-high stockings, surprisingly high defence and, for the party of pawns following behind you, an unbeatable view of your muscular buns as you clamber around and loose arrows like Hawkeye in a posing pouch. With a name like the Ranger's Tights, we have to assume this is the preferred leg armour of Vermin's hard-working rangers, who hate to be restricted in their leg movements as much as they love a fresh breeze on their behinds. Will it change your working relationship with your pawns now they have to look at your butt cheeks all day? Let's hope not, because I, for one, would miss the victory hand slaps. Oh cool, actually, looks like we're all good. I knew my lion guy would get it. Suffering for years, Kratos, the once great general, now known as the ghost of Sparta, had pledged himself as a champion to the gods of Olympus. In return, he hoped only to rid himself of the nightmares that haunted him for far too long. It's easy to forget there were a bunch of God of War games before the 2018 one where Kratos spends much of his time demonstrating harsh parenting techniques. I'm sorry. Do not be sorry. Be better. Someone's not getting that world's best dad mug this Father's Day. Still, this family unit is faring better than that of the previous games, where Kratos was tricked into killing his wife and daughter by OG God of War Ares in order to toughen him up. In that instant, the glory he had reveled in turned to horror. The image of his two final victims would stay with him for all his days. That sets Kratos on a multi-game quest for vengeance, and even the handheld PlayStation Portable wasn't safe, as God of War Chains of Olympus arrived in miniature mobile form in 2008. The game featured the same action from the PS2 versions, and was just as demanding. Kratos never really was one for picking on someone his own size. If you fancied a second run at the game, perhaps for another chance to experience that quick time event where you push a 10 year old girl over in a field, you'll almost certainly want to run through the game again with the special outfit you unlocked on completing the game the first time. An outfit which confers infinite magic and four times the resistance to damage for an easy breezy second playthrough. 
The only slight problem with this plan is that special outfit is the so-called Spud of War. Yes, that is the mighty ghost of Sparta dressed in a fantastically unflattering baked potato costume. Of course, it looks utterly ridiculous, but you have to admire the attention to detail. The Blades of Chaos have been swapped for a pair of potato cutters, the potato has been peeled in the shape of Kratos' distinctive tattoos, and he's even wearing a sort of tinfoil nappy. In spite of these flourishes, I can't imagine being dressed as a comedy tuba will improve his legendary bad mood. Still, it is sort of appropriate in that Kratos doesn't just have a chip on his shoulder, he has the whole dang potato. Is everything all right between us? What can I say? I like your style. It is often said that clothes maketh the person, and nowhere is this more true than in the Fallout series in which wearing the right hat, jacket, or confusingly 1950s detective outfit can make a huge difference to your stats. What are your thoughts on our relationship? Things are going great, and they keep getting better. I hope it lasts. As such, when you're wandering the wasteland in Fallout 4, you might find yourself wearing an outfit cobbled together out of random pieces of apparel you found lying around the place on the basis of the stats they confer. Yes, this sea captain's hat may look strange, but it gives me plus two to endurance. You know, like a sea captain. But while all this stuff piled on top of each other might look weird, it's nothing compared to an outfit you can find in the Fallout 4 Nuka World DLC, a theme park mascot costume known as the Nuka Girl Rocket Suit. This stylish bit of gear boosts your charisma and lets you breathe underwater and has decent energy weapon and radiation resistance stats which are all good upsides. The downside is you look really stupid. And it does kind of detract from serious conversations in the game when you show up dressed like Flash Gordon with an exposed midriff and thigh-high PVC boots. What you got? We have an issue with the disciples. The other downside? You can't wear any other clothes with it, so no stacking items for better stats. At least let me balance a sea captain's hat on top fallout. I'll tie it on with string if I have to. Everyone knows you can tell how fast a car is just by looking at it. If it has stripes, it's fast. If it's red, it's fast. And the more exhaust pipes it has, the faster it goes. Hey, I don't make the rules. In spite of its cast of cartoony characters and colourful aesthetic, Mario Kart 8 has some pretty cool looking cars. There's the 60s F1 inspired B Dasher, the futuristic looking P Wing, and a Mercedes GLA luxury SUV. Clearly this plumbing business is working out alright for Mario. The thing is, if, like we do, you're picking your Mario Kart vehicle based on aesthetics alone, it turns out you're a mug. Each of these kart chassis and the components you bolt onto it has a host of individual stats. And where there's stats, there's a meta. One of the most powerful metas is optimising for Mini Turbo, which you can't see here. That's because it's an entirely hidden stat that was uncovered by data miners. In spite of it being hidden, Mini Turbo is a far more important stat than the standard speed and acceleration stats because it affects three aspects of the turbo boost you get when you drift. It affects the speed with which you earn your Mini Turbo, the percentage speed increase and the duration of the boost. However, I've got bad news if you don't want to drive a cart that looks like a plastic child's toy. The Mini Turbo stat appears to be an attempt to help balance the less fast carts in the game, so as a result it tends to be applied to the less exciting, less cool looking vehicles. The problem is, over a given lap, as long as you were drifting and boosting the Mini Turbo carts were overall faster. So if you want to dominate online races, you're going to need to pick a cart like the Biddy Buggy. Or the Mr Scooty. Should I die of shame now or wait until I cross the finish line? It only gets worse from there. If you want to truly maximise your stats, you'll need to pick one of the heavyweight drivers who will look extra ridiculous in this tiny Fisher Price My First Go Kart. And then you'll need to bolt on the roller wheels, which are so tiny they make any vehicle they're fitted to look like a novelty shopping cart. Behold, the best possible racer in Mario Kart 8. No, I can't do it. I'd honestly rather lose.
Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater is a complicated game. On the one hand, it's a taut political espionage thriller with brutal survival mechanics and deep emotional boss fights. You're a wonderful man. Kill me. Kill me now. And on the other hand, it has a mini game in which you run around catching monkeys. Gotcha. Gotcha. This is Snake vs. Monkey, a mode featuring characters from the PlayStation series Ape Escape, in which Snake stops interfering in 1960s geopolitics for a second to round up some escaped chimps. Gotcha. It's a fun diversion, and the two modes are pretty separate, so it doesn't actually impact on the main game too much. Unless you finish it. Complete Snake vs. Monkey and set the high score on every level and you'll unlock two new pieces of gear for Naked Snake to use in the main game. These are banana camouflage for your fatigues and a plastic monkey mask which, if I'm honest, does change the tone of the game a little bit. It won't be truly finished until we complete Phase 2. Phase 2. The weapon's true form. If it is completed and the Colonel gets his hands on it, it will mean the end of the Cold War. The end of the Cold War. As ridiculous as these two pieces of gear are, they do serve a useful function. The banana camo makes every piece of food you eat taste good, a bonus in a game called Snake Eater where, yes, you sometimes have to eat actual snakes. Whereas the monkey mask prevents dogs from attacking you, which is useful if you're one of those people who don't like being attacked by dogs. <laughs> So yes, we will unfortunately be dressed for much of the game like we're wearing a Halloween costume we hurriedly bought from a gas station. Luckily, due to the top secret nature of these missions, the CIA will redact all of this. So no one will ever know. To say that Bloodstained Ritual of the Night is inspired by Castlevania Symphony of the Night is like saying that the movie Transmorphers is only inspired by the movie Transformers. That is to say, it's clearly bullshit. The difference here is that Bloodstained Ritual of the Night was made by Koji Igarashi, the developer behind Symphony of the Night, so it's sort of fair enough that he's made a spiritual sequel to his most successful and beloved game. Whether or not Konami's lawyers would agree is none of our business. Given that both games are side-scrolling platformer RPGs that take place in an enormous sprawling castle, actually the biggest difference between the two is that Bloodstained has 3D graphics instead of 2D pixel art. <sighs> and while back in 2D Castlevania's day it wasn't tenable to animate all the various bits of gear on a 2D sprite, in 3D Bloodstained clothing or armour you find on the floor or in a chest appears on lead character Miriam when you equip it. Now that I think about it, it is weird that every item of clothing in this castle fits her so well. Early in the game you'll want to optimise your build for luck, because it increases the amount of loot and shards you pick up and increases your chances of getting a critical hit, allowing you to level up more quickly. The problem is, the really cool looking stuff tends to contribute to more serious combat focused stats like defence or constitution. By contrast, that leaves the luck stat mainly applied to the most ludicrous and embarrassing gear in the game, such as this weird looking stone mask, this adorable bunny scarf or this novelty Santa hat. If anything, it should be bad luck to wear that any time other than December. As a result, a build optimised specifically for luck in order to speed up your character progression in the early game tends to leave you looking like you've been dragged backwards through a thrift store. They still fit great though. What a stroke of luck. If you played N64 game The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, the main thing you remember is probably how the game takes place on a three day cycle. At the end of which, a giant moon with a terrifying face crashes into the planet you're on, killing everyone. It's the sort of thing that's hard to forget. 
Almost as important to the game, however, were the masks that you could find throughout. Once equipped, some masks transformed Link into different forms, like a Deku or a Goron, with corresponding powers. <laughs> while other masks have special effects, like causing fairies to move towards you. All of these masks have their different uses at different times, but the most consistently useful mask in Majora's Mask is the Bunny Hood, which you get as a reward for helping a man with his chickens. When equipped, this bunny hood lets you run one and a half times faster than usual and jump farther distances, and in an open world game like Majora's Mask, which requires you to regularly traverse long distances on foot, it's an absolute godsend. That moon will be here any minute, so any speed advantage is welcome. The problem is it looks deeply, deeply silly. The ears extend a good foot above Link's head, can be seen from every angle, and are available almost from the very start of the game. As such, there's a good chance if you played Majora's Mask, your Link spent the majority of your playthrough dressed like he was on his way to take part in an Easter parade. <laughs> Still, worth it for the speed boost. You know, I think we've managed to buy ourselves enough time to... Nope. My mistake. Ah, uh, yeah. Just enjoying the plus one warmth from my Outside Xbox t-shirt. Get yours at store.outsidexbox.com. And if you enjoyed this video, why not like and subscribe? We've got some other videos up here as well. One from us, one from our sister channel, Outside Extra. And if you'd really like to support what we do, head over to patreon.com slash oxclub to join our fan discord. Hope to see you there.